everybody, welcome to the Atheist Experience. We are live coming to you from Austin, Texas. I'm Matt Dillhoney, joining me Jeff D. Hi welcome. Matt. How are you? Good, you? Uh, good. Tired. Yeah. This is a live call-in show and we're going to probably get started with calls right away. I don't know if you had anything you want to talk about before. I don't have anything special today. You ready to, I was going to say beat up on callers, but we're not going to beat up on callers. No. At least until they deserve it. But uh, we've got, oh, let's, let's, uh, <laughs> Let's start with number two real quick. Eric in Deltona, Florida, how are you? Good, how are you? Pretty good. What do you got for us? I wanted to know if it's um, shame to be a, if man created God from his own imagination. Is that a good way of putting it? Um, well, I don't, I don't know... We, we don't know for sure that's the case in all cases, but we do know that people have invented gods for all sorts of reasons, and uh, it seems reasonable to say that we did so kind of in our image. You know, you've got uh, man, and then the superman, and then the super superman type thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of different gods that people have proposed, and a lot of the stories uh, that go with those gods are mutually exclusive, right? They can't both be true. And so not all God, you know, even, even if we atheists are completely wrong, not all of those other gods can actually exist because they're contradictory. And therefore, the ones that don't exist are made up. Just the same as, as if the concept of God itself was made up. Uh, we think so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, what do you think? Well, that's when I, I'm going around telling people who approach me and ask me if you know, I'm a theist or not. And I'm telling them I'm an atheist, and I, that's what I believe in the period. <laughs> and yeah, okay. then the end of conversation, and they go about their business. Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's probably, you know, a little more sound to say that, you know, I don't see any reason to think that your God isn't just made up. Do you have some evidence for it? But yeah, you're fine. Okay. Well, cool. I enjoy the show and appreciate you guys. Thanks, Eric. All right. Bye -bye. Ha have a good day. All right. John in Chicago, how you doing? Hey, what's up, dudes? How's it going? Pretty good. Good. How's the weather out in Texas, man? I spent some time in Fort Hood and I loved it. It's pretty nice. It's nice today. Yeah, man, it's pretty nice here in Chicago. But yeah, I called uh, last week, and the, com uh, the conversation got kind of stale. Uh, we were talking about uh, DNA and ancient civilizations, and I didn't have any references uh, on me at the time. Mm. And the host pretty much thought I was talking crazy, you know, out my wazoo, but <clears throat> there are actually uh, plenty of uh, architects and engineers who have studied some ancient sites and um, pretty much have concluded that they're, they're much older than what we initially believed and that uh, a lot more technical engineering had to go on into building the pyramids and other structures than uh, just using ropes and stone tools and copper chisels. And yet we've already demonstrated that it actually can be built that way. Um, and I'm wondering if these architects and engineers, I mean, it's, it's nothing to cite that you found an architect or an engineer that agrees with some fringe theory. You can find that for everything. There's, there's people with PhDs that support all sort of medical woo. The question is whether or not their claims have actually withstood peer review and are now accepted science. And if they're not, then there's no point in even, you know, talking about it until that happens. Well, the, I think the whole thing with peer reviews is um, I personally think they're kind of biased, you know. Cause it's yeah, they're biased. 
they're biased towards good evidence and reality. They, they have strict standards. And you're biased against the process of peer review because it's not coming up with the stuff you like to hear. Well, not necessarily. Yeah. I'm, I'm all Come for peer on. review. You know, I've, I've graduated college and, you know, I've written papers and, and I respect science, man, and I respect those guys. Um, but when things come up that contradict, you know, mainstream theory, they, they tend to be pushed to the side and not really looked at because they're, they jeopardize, you no, know. No, no, that's, here's the thing. Um, what happens is if we have a bunch of established, reliable scientific information that's a, that's a consensus where people have made predictions and, and it's been independently peer-reviewed and independently verified, and if somebody comes up with, a, with an idea that, is wildly different from that, then the position isn't, oh, you're crazy, we don't want to hear that. It's, where's your evidence, let's review it. Because turning science on its head is the sort of thing that would earn Nobel Prizes and huge grants. Science isn't opposed to this, and science, by the way, isn't one, some one monolithic uh, you know, entity. It's, you know, if you had actual good evidence that would establish something that that we thought was that would have looked at as absurd. That's worldview altering. It's huge, right? And yet, okay, well, then it you know you don't get to portray it as because your pet theory hasn't actually survived good peer review. Maybe it will in the future. Maybe they'll come up with you know the evidence and you'll you'll be found to be correct. Um, right. But the time to believe that is after it's happened and not before. Well, you know, I think it's 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 all how you view the evidence and your worldview. If you place your uh, evolutionary worldview and a, a so-called uh, scientific established worldview on how you view the evidence, then you know you have to admit it can be biased. And I think it's exciting to know that people are coming forward with new evidence that challenges the mainstream. You know, and I'm no kook. I'm no you know. I, I spent time in the military, and and I used to be an atheist, and. <laughs> You know, I, I get where you guys are coming from. Some of the stories that creationists come up with, you know, to justify or validate their God is, I mean, it's insane. You know, because, you know, they've been brainwashed, you know, their religion. And But I, I have a different stance. But I happen to think that there's different um, evidence out there that's in contrary to the mainstream belief, especially regarding ancient uh, structures and sites and civilizations. And I can share a few with you if you, if you care to listen. I, I, sure, give me one, because I don't know what we can possibly accomplish from this. Um, it, to me, it's not any different than providing, you know, uh, calling in to say that you're convinced that homeopathy works, despite, you know, the fact that uh, nobody's been able to demonstrate this, and you, you're, you've got some, you know, particular bit of information you'd like yeah, to present. It, it is, in fact, completely pointless to say this stuff to us. We are not no. the peers that are going to review this information. So we're not in a position to form uh, any kind of, uh, of compelling reaction to it. And all this is going to do is give you an opportunity to read your pet beliefs into the record. And I don't think there's any point to that. So, so tell me... Well, get back to us when, when the scientific establishment does agree with what you are telling us, and then we'll talk about that. Yeah, I mean, if we, can't, if we can't agree on how we go about finding the truth, I don't know what good it is for you to actually present your stuff. And every time, you know, uh, I listened to your, to your previous call, um, every time people disagree with you, you say, well, I believe blah de blah de blah That's fine. You're welcome to your beliefs, but the fact that you have them doesn't make them special or anything that anybody else should pay the slightest attention to. Oh, I'm not, I think you're I, wasting I don't our time. Disagree with you. I mean, these these are my beliefs and beliefs of other individuals that clearly. And I don't against, care. You know, what good is that? What good but is that to I anybody? Think the, the what matters? That I have to present, excuse me, caller. What, John. John. Hello. What matters is not what you believe. What matters is what you can prove. Right. <laughs> and and I have some evidence here that No, I mean, you d dude, you don't prove it by reading that evidence into the record. We don't know. know whether the we don't know whether the thing you want to tell us now is accurate. So and we are not the people who are qualified to make that to make that uh, decision. Nor are most of the people in our audience. That right. those claims need to be taken before people who are qualified to evaluate it. 
And all that letting you read that into the record will do is, you know, if uh, you're, you're coming from the standpoint of, oh, this is very exciting. And people do have a bad tendency to latch on to stuff that sounds exciting when they have I no agree. idea how to evaluate whether it's true or not. And so I think it's counterproductive to read exciting sounding, unproved ideas into the record. So I don't want to hear it. I disagree because that's what science is based on. No, 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 John, John, events. John, science is not based on calling into an atheist TV show. I, I know this happens to be a passion of mine. You know, I, I, we don't care. I like the discussion we between atheists care, and, and believers. And, you know, I'm always up for discussion. And I think this is something new. That brings to it's the table not and new. Eric von Donneken was doing this shit in the 70s. There's nothing new about this. Oh, all right. All right. Give me, give me, because, oh. of, because we always do this, I, I want to know what you believe and why. So you've got two minutes to tell me what your claim is and one piece of evidence for it, the best piece you've got. Oh, okay. Well, last week, uh, like I said, the conversation got kind of stale because I didn't have anything in front of me. But here's a list of architects and engineers who've been on the record confirming uh um, no you're not going to do that i'm not going to let you just rattle off a list of people that's an argument from authority i have no way of verifying any of these people and what they no. say don't matter doesn't doesn't matter i need evidence not a list of people i don't care if you have a right. thousand well i just wanted to give some some validation to what i'm saying so you no don't think no no coup. no no john that doesn't validate you in any way i don't give a damn if nobody has ever said it or if you have a hundred thousand people you can cite you don't well, understand I... no you're done if every single person on the planet who is not a uh historian or paleontologist or whatever field these these claims you are about to try to share with us uh uh, whatever field those fall into, if every single person who's not qualified to evaluate that evidence thinks it's compelling, it doesn't matter. Does not matter. You know, I tried. I, I really, really tried. And John, if you're still listening or if you listen to this after the fact, here's the thing. I'm happy to hear what somebody believes in why, as long as they don't drone on forever. Um, but you have to understand what the why part means. And if I give you the opportunity and you say, here's a list of people who think X, that's no different from reading Bible verses to me, and I'm not wasting one bit of time on that. That is, I care too much about the audience that's actually watching this to have them start bleeding from the eyeballs and ears because you don't understand the scientific process and feel like rattling off a whole bunch of people who think something. because That makes you feel like you're probably more right because as other people agree with you, I understand it. It's what keeps people in religions. The fact that they're constantly surrounded by a whole bunch of other people who agree with what they agree with. And some of these people have really fancy titles and funny hats. And it makes them important, but it doesn't make what they're saying one millimeter closer to being true. All right. Ryan I, in I, Utah. I warned you about that guy. I know. <laughs> I how are you guys doing? Show. It's insane. I hey. know. I don't know how we're doing yet. <laughs> I was actually curious if you guys have heard of this book called The 5,000 Year Leap. I haven't. I have not. Uh, well, it's kind of a scary book. It's, uh, he was a Mormon. I'm an atheist, by the way. Uh, by the name of W. Cleon uh, Skosin. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name correct. But it's a book on 28 principles on how this country was founded and how to make it a better country. And basically every single principle says it's founded to be a Christian nation and that without us being a Christian nation, we're basically not going to thrive or we're going to fail. Where does the 5,000 years come in? Uh, basically, I think it's saying that in the past 200 years, with Christianity uh, being the founding of the United States, we've made a leap 5,000 years into the future. That's his <laughs> assertion. Well, you know that, that would, I hope it's actually true because there's that time travel that we that we need to develop. <laughs> I, I, I hope it's actually true because uh, Christianity has clearly held us back at least 5,000 years. Oh, I would the, agree. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you make such assertions saying that uh, the reason why our schools have failed is the fact that we have taken uh, Bible studies out of it and all that kind of stuff and saying that the United States has a manifest destiny to the world to be a blessing to the entire human race. Yeah, crazy and crazy wrong. The United States isn't in any way founded on the 
Christian religion or even on deistic religion, it doesn't matter whether some of the founders were deists or Christians or anything else, we have a constitution that with the only mention of religion is to pr prohibit any public, uh, any test, any religious test for any public office or trust. The First Amendment guarantees freedom of religion. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I don't know. It, this is this is I guess this may even be crazier than wall builders because it, you know at least David Barton's just flat out lying and misrepresenting and misquoting whereas you know in this case uh, I haven't read the book so I can't really say yeah well in the past year Glenn Beck has been spouting this book off as uh, true American history and it's been gaining a lot of strength in the uh, conservative side the right now the crazy community that listens to Glenn Beck yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, his whole community right now, there's uh, thousands of people out there that are reading this book and taking this as, you know, the new Bible. This is, you know, this is truth. This is truth. Instead of looking at it and analyzing it and realizing it's more brainwashing. <laughs> yep. And it's kind of scary. Yeah, I don't know what to say. I haven't, haven't read the book. Don't listen to Glenn Beck because I like my brain to work. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was saying if you ever want to read some BS, take a look at it. I find no shortage of BS, but thanks for the tip. I don't know. Have you run, have you run out of nonsense things to read? I, I, when, I, when I want to read bullshit, I find, you know, uh, you know a good fantasy novel, oh, which, is, exactly it's, is. which is complete crap, <laughs> but at least it's then well-written and entertaining. And I don't have, uh, you know, nobody's running the risk of accidentally believing that it's true. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, we're going to... Go ahead. Thanks, Ryan. We're going to try and crank through some calls real quick. Uh... Whoops. Adam in New York. Oh, cool. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, take you up speakerphone. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah, so uh, I had a question. Uh, I didn't want to put words in your mouth, so I didn't want to presume to know why you guys are uh, on the show and why you guys are uh, working for the organization that you are. So Thanks. I was curious how you would state your kind of mission statement. Um, either of you, I don't know, how, what, what you uh, try to accomplish doing sure. the show. Sure. I want to change the world. I want to eliminate religion. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. So um, I'm. I'm just curious. Uh, tr tr do you want to change the world for your kids? Do you, is it limited to your lifetime, or is it kind of a uh, state of mind? The fact that you're working towards making a better world is that the goal? Yeah, both. I mean, or the fact the fact that people and people and people right now um, are benefiting from what we've done on the show, and people in the future will benefit too. It's a, you could benefit both ways. Okay. Yeah, because I, was, I, I, I guess um, I, I'm an atheist, and I'm, I'm curious. Uh, I, I, I've watched this. I've seen it a few times. I, I enjoy the show. I, I, I just um, I don't see why. Uh, it, it seems like a sacrifice for me to generate kind of negativity that you would in Austin, especially in Austin, Texas, or um, uh, even uh, where I live in New York. It seems like a, a thing that uh, kind of uh, draws a lot of negative feedback and uh, and perhaps for a, a person who expects to live one lifetime, um, it might be uh, the cause of some strife and uh, stress. Uh, <laughs> at least it has been for me. I, I, I wouldn't promote, I wouldn't try to uh, attribute the values of atheism or the way people see atheism to my name. You know what I mean? Draw attention to that fact. So I, I guess I, I'm curious why you, I guess if you didn't expect to accomplish uh, that goal of creating a better world within your lifetime, whether you think that state of mind is worth the uh, cost, I guess. I, I don't know if you see it as a cost. I do. But, um, well, I, we're, I'm already achieving my goals on a regular basis. Uh -huh. But even if I wasn't, I, I, I'm of the opinion that you know, there's value in truth and there's value in doing what you can to make the world a better place. Um, so yeah, I mean, not everybody's going to agree that it, you know, the effort's worth it. I don't, just just reasons for doing this may be different from mine. I don't know. No, I have the same reasons as as Matt. Um, I, I can report having you know been involved with the show off and on for a long, 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 long time that. Uh, I, I think what you are saying is that you imagine that 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 uh, that this puts us in some kind of danger, or or you know, puts us face to face with with angry people on a regular basis, or has some kind of other major negative consequences. No, um, 
you know, the occasional angry, uh, angry email and, uh, and of course the callers that we deal with is, a, is about it. It's, it's no big deal. Now your situation may well be uh -huh. different and you have to make a decision for yourself what you, what you uh, care uh, strongly enough about to, uh, to, uh, to, to speak about and, and that's entirely your choice. Yeah, and, and you know, Austin isn't isn't the kind of place where I'd really worry about that. But personally, oh, as, long, as long as I could actually as long as I could actually find a way to pay for the security, I'd do this show anywhere. I don't you know, I'd do it in the middle of Iraq Iraq if I could. Um, really? Sure. See, that, that, I guess that's kind of my question. I I I'm I I, I certainly see um I, I mean if, if I were in Iraq, I I would I would feel uh <laughs> Well, I wasn't talking about physical harm, but I think that that is one one of the uh, potential um, um, drawbacks to uh, allowing people to kind of peer into your head and, and get an impression of what you believe yeah, what that I, might what rub I, them the wrong way. I mean, if if you say that you're an atheist in in a room full of uh, evangelical Christians, they may try to save you and and then get frustrated and and uh, you might draw negative attention to yourself. I just don't see. I mean, I, I I don't necessarily. I'm not so. Uh, I, I don't know. I I, I I'm not so. Uh, caught up in, in what people think of me or my opinions, that it would be, it, it would be uh, you know, a huge psychological cost. But I, I think, you know, day-to-day, -day, your day-to-day -day life in, um, I guess, maybe Austin might be a nice place to live for an atheist, but if in Iraq might be seriously... Sure. Uh, when, when <laughs> it I see, seems like well, hang on. if you could live your life and, and delude everyone about what you thought and your opinions, but why, why not? Ah. Uh. Um, you've a couple of times you've brought up this thing about you know within our lifetimes. What does that matter? Well, I, or is do you I, think I, do you think something about atheism means you know uh, eliminates the validity of caring about how things uh, wind up long term even after we're gone? Yes. Really? Why? Yes. Yeah. I I, I don't think uh, I I think the what what people uh, call moral objectivity in, in in the sense that there is there are these tenants or, or rules that can uh, apply to you that, that don't, aren't, aren't uh, autonomous rules that you created to kind of navigate in this society. I think if you're creating those rules yourself, they can be objective and, and it, it wouldn't really be, it, the word wouldn't refer to the same thing. But when people are referring to objective morals like, uh, I think murder's wrong because it's wrong, hang, because hang it's on. wrong, hang I on, don't, Adam, um, yeah. How the hell do we get to morality? Well, well, we're talking I, about I guess, what, doing a TV was, show. I, I guess I thought what you were asking was, uh, I, I, how, how would you frame what you're asking? Are you asking me whether, whether as, as, as let an him, let him I feel like my day-to-day... -day, you exhibited again. surprise that, or, or you were questioning why we would want to do this show. Apparent, uh, my, my interpretation of what you said was that it seems interesting to you that we would do this show as we are atheists, and mm -hmm. why would we care about how the world is going to be after we are gone because you kept talking about whether we wanted to, thought that any changes would happen within our lifetimes i don't see how that's relevant or how atheism impacts whether or not it's valid for us to care how the world's going to be after we're gone and, and my my simple take well, on this my simple yeah. take on this really really quick is um, I don't know if you've read anything by uh, Colonel Ingersoll, who lived at the no. end of the 19th century. Br great stuff. Go to infidels.org sometime. Look in the, the uh, historical library. Look up Ingersoll. Some of the stuff he wrote is amazing. He's a, a big hero of mine. Uh, he was dead long before I was born. And yet the fact that his words have been saved and they seriously impacted my life and made my life better, that's something I value. So the fact that these shows will live on, you know, whether I die today or 50 years from now or whenever, yeah. um, the fact that, that this information is going, is going to continue and that we uh, took steps to provide that information is something I can actually value now, knowing that it's going to be better later. I do see that, and I, I guess that, that is where I was coming from. I, I, I understand that um, your benefits will be in the here and now, even if, you're, if they pertain to things that happen after you're gone. But I, I, I see the cost-benefit analysis. If you're, if you're looking at it like, well, here now, I'm, I'm, I expect that the world will be a better place or I'm contributing to a better world in the future that can give you a, a positive um, in, it, uh, incentive to continue doing what you're doing and, and it'll be instantly gratifying and stuff like that. I understand that, but is it enough? I guess, because it, it doesn't seem even uh, even close in my life. I, I guess I, I don't have, have a community I have, to come to, I, to go kind of join with us, but I, I have a 
a large percentage of the people that I meet are atheists, but um, even among my atheist friends, um, I, I, I do get the impression that if I were to, if I were capable of deluding them into believing that I had this really great moral compass that came from, and I believed in this transcendent being, and I was, you know, just thoroughly convinced by it, uh, that I would be more trustworthy. I would be, I, I, I would have this kind of earnest quality to, to my, uh, I, I, I would, I would, I, it would it would appear to them that I were holding myself accountable when no one were watching. Okay. Because God, because God would watching would okay. would be watching me in that scenario. I, I mean, it seems like I could I could I could H hang get on. a lot more out of hang being on, deluded. Adam. Adam, hang on. Um, those try those seem like rather unusual atheist friends you've got there. But okay, and well. so what? Where are you going with this? Are you? Are you moving in the direction of saying, oh, well, we should lay off of religion because it's such a useful tool for helping people put on a facade of trustworthiness? What are you talking about? I don't know if it's a we statement. I guess, I guess it seems like, uh, personally, um, uh, I, 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 don't see, I don't see why you or the person sitting next to you would make their own decision to do it. I, I, I believe that your, your, your organization, I'm glad it's around. I, I, I want it to be around. I think your political agenda is actually runs pretty parallel we haven't got a political the organization agenda. runs pretty parallel with mine in that I would like a secular uh, uh, you know uh, secular state with with um, rules which have nothing to do with theocracy or God or or okay. a spiritual dimension or anything like that I'm, I'm with that but I just I don't, I don't see why um, why in the culture that we do live in um, with the time that we are given, um, someone would take that uh, kind of cost benefit, benefit, uh, cost benefit sure. problem and, well, sure. and turn it I, into I, their problem. We already told you there's, there has not been a big cost. Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah. I put in a few hours once every what is it, my four, four or five weeks. I'm here as a co-host. You know, Matt's here more often. It's not that big of a deal. We're not, we're not like having to sl you know, uh, skulk around town avoiding angry Christians. In the, in the decade that I have been or involved Muslims. in this, more than a decade, huh? Or Muslims. I, mean, I don't have enough time to avoid never, Muslims. Never either. once have I had an encounter with an angry Christian in public who said, oh, I saw you on that show, I'm so mad. Bunches mm -hmm. of times. Bunches of times, out of nowhere, I have met people from around town who said, oh, you're on that show, I love that show. And yeah. not only that, I can report that, you know, comparing the state of the world when, a state of society, uh, when I first started being involved in this show with the way it is now, vast improvement, vast. I can now get on the internet and immediately be hanging out with a bazillion other atheists if I feel so inclined. Uh, that, so, that there is, in fact, a, a, uh, a movement. I don't know how much credit, if any, this show can take, but certainly we haven't done any harm uh, in, uh, in helping to shift society in that direction. And that has been of immediate personal benefit to me. The, the thing is, everybody's going to have to do the cost-benefit analysis on their own. And we've talked before, you know, I want as many out atheists as, as we can have. But I've also told people that if coming out uh, puts your, your, your life, your career, your, your happiness in general just in danger, then, you know, maybe it's not the right time for you yet. But when you're talking about, oh, if, if I could actually dupe them into thinking that I, I was a believer with a, quote, good moral compass um, and was trustworthy, um, I think that, first of all, those of us who are out are, are doing what we can to make the world a better place so that everybody can come out. Uh, and I'm also, I'm also here to point out that, that they don't have a good moral compass, and they're not more trustworthy. In fact, oh, I'm in they, agreement. In I want to rephrase that. I, I didn't fact, mean good Adam, moral compass. I just meant. I just meant. Uh, it, 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 I, I, you, you can bet that if if I'm driving my own morals, uh, or, or you, you, one one would think that if I'm driving my own morals, that they aren't aren't necessarily going. They they, they may jive with someone else's. Whereas if if I were if I were some earnest believer of of these like tenets, which which uh, served. Some purpose that came from uh, a, a, a second, you know, some third party source, then it, it, it might, it, it might uh, lend itself to being a little more accommodating to other people than I would 
choose to in my own autonomous realm. I have no idea. You know what why, I, mean? I have no idea why you would leap to that conclusion. Well, it it seems it's. It, I know that we're living in a social. It, uh, I mean, I mean, if, if you weren't in a social no, world and, and Adam, it, go ahead, uh, you're on religion hold. Religion does have a reputation, right? An undeserved reputation in our society for being a source of good behavior. Uh, and uh, okay, fine. I'm I, I'm again a, a surprised if you characterize your atheist friends as people who believe that 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 religion deserves that reputation. No, but I, even but yeah. even so, so what? I I I I I think Matt and I are having trouble seeing what it your isn't point so much a good, is. A good you were surprised. As it is a, you were uh, curious why we were doing the show. We've explained it. That, it. that the negative consequences you seem to think we might be facing are, uh, in fact, either not so big or non-existent. Uh, we've explained that you know, if, if you must boil it down to a cost-benefit analysis, instead of merely feeling like we have as much right as the next person to speak our minds, um, that, in fact, the cost-benefit analysis is already going our way. So I don't know what's left other than, you know, you have these ideas in your head about what the costs to you might be to do the same thing. And that's fine. Don't do it. Nobody's asking you to, to be on a TV show or be out as an atheist. But I would no, ask I'm you to sure. go back and reconsider whether you want to latch on to this undeserved reputation that religion has. But other than that, what else do we have to talk about? The, the other thing, well, the, the aspect of this that this, this really bugs me, and I just did a big talk uh, about firebrands versus accommodationists and this, this constant bull crap that keeps coming up uh, is <sighs> religions by and large aren't good moral systems. They aren't even moral systems. That's Chris, what I was going to address. Chris, I don't, I don't, I don't God believe that. God damn. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't mean that they were good moral systems. I, I just meant that they were. I they understood were, uh, what they, you meant. You could. You could. Uh, I guess you could access it without a social uh, construct. I, I, I had. Oh, construct. for Christ's sake! I understood what you meant. Stop interrupting me. Okay. The thing is, they're not moral systems. Christianity is immoral from the ground up. Islam is immoral from the ground up. But what they've done is they've conned the world into thinking that they are moral systems, and it becomes a so so social shorthand to say, oh, you're like me and you believe these things and we're both good people. And I find when I do my cost-benefit analysis, I don't just consider the immediate personal cost to me. I attempt to consider the long-term, broader costs to everyone of the continuation of a system that shows preference for religious beliefs that are divisive and harmful. And I'm not, I'm not a martyr. I'm not trying to, to, to sacrifice myself. And I'm not putting my own interests aside. Because as I change the world, I benefit too. I just have a longer, broader view of it than most people seem to have. Mm -hmm. And that's why we do what we do. Anything else, yeah. Adam? No, no, that's, that's good. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, Adam. Uh, Kevin in the UK, how are you? Hi, fine, fine. I'm enjoying your program. Thanks. I have a point. Follows slightly on from your remarks to the last caller. Religious television. I watch them occasionally to get the blood pressure up when it's feeling down. And how do we know, just as a matter of interest, this is just an intellectual argument, is who are the con artists, the ones who are out to steal your money? Who are the delusional, and who are the plain mad? Now, and and, and the, uh, they seem to go to those three. I know people like Popoff are obviously complete and utter con artists. We know that. I mean, you've only got to watch them. And the other ones with their share -a where they all want money. But then there are the other idiots who... Are they... Are they I, I often wonder whether they are... Ignorant, stupid, or, um, I mean, like the banana man, comfort. What's wrong with them? <laughs> uh, well, I think uh, part of the, some of the people that fall into that last category are, in fact, people who actually believe this stuff, right? Yeah, they do and the crap. It, they it, actually they have believe to be... it. And, and it, it's incredible that you could show them tree rings that go back, say, seven, 8,000 years, 
but the world's only 6,000 yeah. years. But, but, Kevin... And no matter what you say, there is nothing you can do. Now, is it the educational system? Is it the home? I don't know. Well, you know, the, um, the, the ones who are clearly con artists, their con wouldn't work if they weren't able to convince other people to believe this stuff. And, it's, and when those people get, should get TV shows, then it's just people who believe these wacky things that have their own TV shows. That's all I was trying to say. And, and also, yeah. to, to respond to something you said, when you said there's nothing you can do about it, I don't buy that. Um, well, that is a very... I, I agree. I, I have complained in the UK, and the people who are in charge of the broadcasting, because it's run by certain gentlemen who's in the news over here, Rupert Murdoch, because they pay uh -huh. to go on his sky channels so there's money hang up there so you won't get anywhere there uh, they then claim all sorts of benefits they're providing for people which are extremely dubious at the best and at the worst they're outright con artists these people should be in jail not on television there are a number of them that should but when i was talking about this this idea that you can't do anything about it i'm not talking about getting them off tv or anything like that um although i would be in favor certainly of going after any con artists that you know we can actually prove that they're uh, intentionally duping people and robbing them. I'm talking about the thing that you can do is to change minds. Uh, mm. you, you educate people and you minimize the pool that they can take advantage of. And by, and by the way, many of these ministers, um, they are also victims. They, you know, some of the most crazy religious people who I would love to actually hate them, um, I have difficulty hating them because they are, I, I, they're, they're wrong. Um, they are doing harm. They need to be uh, stopped or corrected uh, as best we can. But I have difficulty hating them because they believe something sincerely, and it's they're not. You don't get to choose what you believe. Mm -hmm. I, I was a fundamentalist Christian for more than 25 years, um, and I, I'm sure I said and did many things that I would now find despicable. Um, mm -hmm. But and I and I wish I could, you know come up with the one argument that convinces everybody to give up, you know, their crazy beliefs and embrace rationality, uh, but I can't. But the fact that there isn't one argument for everybody doesn't mean that there isn't an argument for everybody, that there isn't some path to, for every single individual to find their way free from the trappings of religion. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah. it is sad because I, 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 I say occasionally I flick through the channels and you get these preachers and they are they're promising things because they can they can never be disproved because you can't prove that God isn't going to to kill you if he, if he doesn't collect a million dollars or whatever in the next fortnight. But it, it just seems sad and and that some of the politicians they they, they creep up to these people. Of course because they have people who will vote lockstep with them. Yeah, I mean, here in the UK, apparently, I think they're starting, trying to start some schools up, and some of them are going to be, they're allowing them to do certain things where they can creep in with, with, with creationism, which is pretty much, a, was a dead duck here, but um, it's, it's, they're coming back via, via people from well, your world, part of the world, and from Australia, and these people. I, I, I yeah, just sorry about know, that. And, uh, it just, it just, Tease me off that these people can they can they can spout their nonsense and there's nothing not nothing we can do but it it, it just seems oh it gets me I, I'm thinking I was, I was sometimes I listen to your program and I wonder some of the people who come up I was thinking there should be a Turing test whether you can tell whether they're trying to wind you up or whether they are genuinely loonies yeah there's not Try, trying to <laughs> trying to spot the pose is uh is a is a fun game. Well, Kevin, thanks so much yeah, for the I call. I wondered that sometimes. I'm not sure, but I, I, I think there's generally a tone in the voice, and you know straight away that they, they actually believe the crap, that they're, not, uh, they're, not, they're trying to convert you and convert us, but uh, God help us. Anyway, it's nice speaking to you. I watch your program regularly. I won't waste any more of your time, and thank you very much for having me on. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, by and large, I, I, I tend to just take people at their word. If, they, if you tell me you believe something, until I have, you know, a, a reason to suspect that you don't, right. I, I'm just going to come. And some of the fake calls that we have had have actually led to interesting conversations yes. until they can't take it anymore and have to, you know, say something about, about body parts or something on the show. One of the fake calls um, even led to me being married. <laughs>
Now, I've always thought. Remember, remember, you know, you used to be able to turn on the TV and see like the 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 uh, the psychic readers or the mm -hmm. people want to read their your tarot cards or something, and it was all there was always the for entertainment purposes only yeah. line across the bottom. And I thought that is the solution for religious programming. I, I'm with you. But for entertainment purposes only, suddenly I don't have a problem with it. They want to put on that show and talk about the Invisible Man and what he wants and all that, and everybody can just sit there with their popcorn and well. maybe throw money at them if they're amused, that would be fine. I still have a problem with it. Do you? I have a problem with the psychics, even if it says for entertainment purposes only, because that's really? a disingenuous cheat. The people that they're having call them and the people that they're getting money from, most of them aren't just doing it for entertainment. They've bought into this. And that's a line that gets them out of the scope of the bunko. But it's a constant reminder. And I, I appreciate it on that level. But is it? Yeah. Is it a constant? If you believe something. You call this, call, you, you what, turn on this show where they're, where they're going to read your tarot cards. Mm -hmm. And the, the video has, for entertainment purposes only, up on the screen every, all the time or every time they ask for money. It's a constant reminder that this, is, this thing you are looking at is in a special category of stuff that uh, you, we're not going to allow you to say it's actually true. Oh, you're thinking too think much a like start. a rational person. Yeah. All right. Well, if, if you actually believe it. Is it better than not saying that at all? No. Really? I think I can make an argument for why it's worse. Do we want to talk about that or do we uh, want to take calls? I'll do it real briefly. Okay. And you can either degree or disagree because uh, those are options. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I'm a sincere believer. I'm not. Let's say I'm a sincere believer, a sincere in, believer in on TV. psychic uh, phenomenon and talking uh -huh. to the dead. Yeah. And I am desperate to, you know, contact my lost loved ones, etc. Uh -huh. When I see the for entertainment purposes only across the bottom of the screen, uh -huh. I realize, if I even pay any attention to it, I realize that this is something that they're being forced to put on there by the government, and it is perhaps uh, intentional suppression of a worldview that people out there just don't want to grasp. They are terrified of the possibility that there may be spirits out there to talk to. This is the man holding communication with the undead down. Okay. That is certainly it an was, attitude that people could possibly hold. Yeah, and it ends up, in, in some cases, uh, it ends up reinforcing. You see, we've already, we already know that once somebody said, has, has professed vocally a belief, um, that they're less likely to change it. And in many cases, once that's happened, even when you present them with the absolute confirmation that their belief is false, uh -huh. that only serves to strengthen their belief. So what do we do? Do we say, do we then um, uh, disallow them from expressing their belief well, in hopes that they will, they will therefore not get locked in? Or do we say nothing? Or do we... Uh, protect the attempt to protect the public to the extent that we can within the bounds of free speech yes. and freedom to do business yeah. and then accept it and move on. Yeah, we, we attempt to Which inoculate the, the third one. We attempt to inoculate everybody with reason and evidence so that this older generation that bought into this nonsense dies off and the thing fades out. And that goes for religion and psychics and homeopathy and, you know. Yeah, I was including the little, the, little, the little disclaimer in that third yeah. thing. As part of it, I well, I don't, I don't. I'm not saying that it's necessarily always a bad thing. I'm just just pointing out a case where it's, it could back. Sure, but anyway, let's go to callers. Nobody <laughs> wants to hear me and Jeff just go at it. Um, uh, that's like a little bit of the nonprofits, right? It is. Which will be back what you next get on the, on Saturday, I'm assuming. Although I'm not. Yeah. Damien in New Zealand, how are you? Hey guys, how are you going? We're doing good. How are you? Good. I'm actually very glad you took my phone call. Um, I've I've been watching your program now for about uh, six months. It's bloody hard to get to get you guys on a, a streaming video over here, but I, I managed to track it down. And I have to say, it's um, it's truly awe inspiring. And I don't say that to, uh, very lightly. Um, I, I think you guys are doing uh, wonderful work over there, and, and it's it's great. Thank you very um, much. I I don't really know a lot about uh, as it. Um, I know a lot about Matt because I, I watched a bit about him on YouTube. Um, I don't know much about Jeff D, but he might be able to sort of weigh in on this as well. Um, I had a very similar background to you, Matt. I was training to be a, a minister slash preacher in New Zealand. Um, I, I studied for a very long time. I, I uh, gave my life to um, basically the calling. I, 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 you know, it was a daily thing, 24-7, um, and I had ambitions of becoming a, a minister 
uh, slash preacher, traveling the world, saving the nation, all that kind of stuff. And I got sick a few years ago. Um, I had cancer, so I had a lot of downtime from the church. And I began to question a lot of my beliefs uh, and, and all that kind of stuff. I'll, I'll keep it very short because, it's, you know, there's a whole process with that. But I, I started to, you know... I suppose, like yourself, I couldn't see a lot of evidence that God was actually real. That that there was no, that there's no existence of God, and and all these these healings and and all that kind of stuff, and uh, the the readings and, and all that kind of stuff. It just there was nothing to sort of back it up with physical, real evidence. And I, I actually left the church about four years ago. Uh, not long. I I got better. Um, my cancer healed up. Um, Great. And I I started. To, I I tried to return to church, but it just I, I was sitting in church thinking, you know, how, how can we keep buying this bullshit? Excuse my French. Uh, how can we keep buying this rubbish? These people are, are using emotional traps and all that kind of stuff, you know, all, the, all the, the usual gimmicks they use. And I, so I left for church. I said to my wife at the time, you know, I'm, I'm never coming back to this. It's just, it's just absolutely rubbish. I don't want to be a part of it anymore. But what, what I've found now is that I'm, I'm trying to... Um, uh, to to make that I suppose transition to becoming an atheist, but there's just that nagging fear that that bundles around in my head, and I and I suppose what I'm asking is, how did you personally manage to overcome that fear? Like, what what if God is real, and what if I'm being sure? Yeah, and if I? you could maybe give me some and, pointers or something, because I mean that, I'm somebody. I mean I I spend a lot of time now. Um, actually studying the evidence. You know, people say that the, the Bible is not a true book. So I go and look for the evidence to, to show that, you know, it isn't actually true. If somebody says to me that, that God does this, or the Bible says this, then I'm not somebody who will just start an argument for the point of argument, but I actually go and find out, and then I'll come back with evidence. But I, for some reason, every time I seem to move in this direction, there's always that nagging fear of, what if you're wrong, Damien? What if God is real? Sure. You're being, you know, so how, how did you personally overcome that sort of, that, that fear? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Jeff start with this, but one quick question. Did your cancer get better after you left the church? It, I, was, I was, what happened was, is I, I got sick during my time of ministry. I went and did uh, nine cycles of chemo. I had to have surgery. Uh, it took about 18 months to heal. So I was actually pulled out of ministry because I wasn't effective uh, and that, and and it, it, I've been given the all clear now. Um, I've, I've been in remission for four years, but it, it it didn't it didn't get healed because people were praying for me. It got healed because the chemotherapy. Oh, I know. I, I was just wondering, wondering wondering about the timing of it. I'll let Jeff get to your question. Yep. Um, I yeah yeah. I, I was still in the church um, when it yeah. When okay. It got better. We were, we were wondering if we could start claiming that atheism cures cancer. That but, would be awesome. Um, uh, that I, I face the exact same thing as you. I was starting to have doubts and, uh, and thinking about this a lot. And uh, I remember the specific moment. I was walking down, uh, down the street in my neighborhood. And, uh, and uh, you know, I, I had my doubts, but I was always coming up against the, the concern that I would anger God and get myself in all kinds of trouble if I allowed myself to take my doubts seriously. Yeah. And what solved it for me was, and I don't know if this is going to fit your situation, but in the Methodist church that I was raised in, we were told that God is kind and loving. And I came to the realization that the kind, loving God that I was raised to believe in would not be the sort of fellow who, if, even if I was mistaken, right, if I used the brain which I'd been told he had given me and used it honestly and let, and, and let it lead me where the evidence appeared to point, a kind, loving God is not the kind of guy who's going to fry me forever just for, for using my brain properly. Yeah. And... And, you know, I realized I could always go back if the evidence changed, right? If the evidence changed and, and, I, and, I, and it suddenly appeared that, wow, no, I, I was wrong during that time, I could go back. So that, um, I, I was not concerned about, you know, my long-term eternal uh, fate or my short-term fate at that point. And then that freed me up to use my brain uh, look at things rationally, look at the evidence honestly, and just accept that I didn't believe. And I'm 
I'm almost completely in agreement with Jeff. It's pretty much the same thing. The, the couple things that I'd add real quickly is that if it turned out there was some other guy of God that, you know, that wasn't respecting of people honestly and sincerely using their intellect and would punish me for it, well, screw him. I'm, he's, you know, a, a moral thug. Um, but in my case, I don't sit around with concerns that I'm wrong because I understand the burden of proof. I understand the nature of evidence, and I don't assert positions, and I don't hold positions, or I try not to, that aren't supported by that. So I'm not running around saying, oh, there's absolutely no gods anywhere. I know this for you know an absolute fact. My position is that uh, I do not believe that gods exist because they haven't been demonstrated by evidence, and I also actively believe that no gods exist for a variety of reasons, but I don't hold this absolutely certain. I, it's about intellectual honesty. It's about being willing to follow the evidence where it leads instead of leading the evidence where you want it to go. And any God uh, that is good and just, I think, well, fr frankly, I, I'm not that interested uh, in what any God happens to think about me, good or evil. Uh, you know, any, anything that might qualify as a God could punish or reward me on any criteria they want. I'm pretty much powerless to do anything about it. And so I'd rather live my life uh, as a decent person in my own, with respect to my own values and the values of, the, of humanity and help improve the world. I mean, it's, uh, I guess I'm kind of almost Jewish in that sense that I'm more concerned about this world than the next. I really don't care about the next, uh, whether it exists or not. That's good. Thanks. I really appreciate that, guys. Thanks, Damien. Appreciate uh, it. Matt, I've seen you on doing debates as well, and I think that you should tour internationally and make sure if you do that, come to New Zealand. Um, I may. Um, I, I know I, I will probably be at next year's uh, Global Atheists uh, meeting in Melbourne uh, that I missed this year, um, which is as close as I'm confident that I'll be to New Zealand. But I don't know. Maybe we can work something out. You should. New Zealand always gets missed out, and I think you would do uh, wonderful over here. You can start my place. Yeah, I think, I think it's only fair that we send somebody back down there since you guys, you know, sent Ray Comfort to us. So <laughs> thanks, Damien. Thank you very much. All right. So as a reminder, after the show's over, we will be at uh, El Arroyo, and that's about all I'm going to say about that. <clears throat> Jay Michael in California, how are you? Doing well. I swear to the Adam, I, uh, I, I almost worship you guys. <laughs> well, stop um, that. What I want to talk about is uh, Jean-Paul Sartre and yeah. uh, one of his famous quotes about uh, that God does not exist, I cannot deny, that my whole being cries out for God, I cannot forget. Yeah. And I, I'm in a quandary. I mean, you know, I, I really do not believe in fairy tales at all, period, the end. I don't believe in a God or anything like that, but yet there is a part of my being that would really love to believe that. You know, so, I, you know, I, I look at movies, and I see them kind of as a manifestation of, of magic, I guess. You know, that man's intellect can put together these things in, in a great way. I, I don't. Do you want, is there a part of you I, I had a about? little bit of that early on, you know, kind of um, a sense of disappointment that it turned out not to be true. Uh, yeah. And, and wishing that, uh, you know, imagining how cool it, certain situations could be if you s stick a god in them. But that's faded. I, I don't have that anymore. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, maybe it will fade for me. And, and to address uh, the previous caller, Damien, um, as far as, you know, trying to rectify, you know, the possibility that there is a god, he, so what? He, does, he lives his life good, morally, and, you know, if he dies, if there is a heaven, okay, then, you know, it's going to be decided whether or not he goes. And if he doesn't go, well, he, would he want to be in a place that wouldn't want him? Yeah, that's I'm, the way I'm, I look at it. Yeah, and and I'm pretty much I think with with Hitchens. Not only uh, do there's not a part of me that wishes there was a God, um, but if I'm wrong and there is, I will be sorely disappointed and think that it's one of the most abominable, you know, circumstances that that I could possibly imagine. That there is some being, uh, you know. I guess it depends on the definition of a God. Um, I can't think of any that I would actually like to have exist, and except maybe like a uh, magical happy God who uh, says, yeah, that was, uh, it was really fun, you know, I, I, I 
feel a little bad that I didn't actually communicate with you, with you guys while you were down there, but you get to keep going. You know, you get to keep on living, and I'm not going to bother you in, in the rest of this, you know, afterlife either. Um, I guess maybe uh, there, you might be able to find some tiny little part of my Grinch heart that might want a god like that, but I'm much more... Uh, I'm happy with reality and the various gods that people have proposed in, with Christianity and Islam uh, where you have these kind of monstrous peeping Tom authoritarian mm, love Those are the gods or, I don't like. I, I totally <laughs> agree with you there. But then in, in, uh, like in, in the Krishna faith, the, everything is a god. Yeah. You know, there's a god for the banana, the god for the uh, potato, the god for, you know, the man. And maybe Everything if I found is out there was a god with some type of uh, otherworldly something. I tell you well, what, if I die and I find out that there is a god, what I want him to say is, "Oh, I was." Why did you people get it all wrong? No, no, no. What I want him to say is, "Oh, I was just so high and so busy that I completely forgot to mess with you guys." But come on <laughs> in, the party's going to continue. So there yeah, you go. Um, uh, you, you might want to try this. This works for me. I, I, uh, uh, my entire appetite for, for magic and fantasy and mystery and wonder is well served by, you know, cool TV shows and fantasy novels and tabletop role-playing games and computer games. Um, there you you can get, you can satisfy your, your natural desire for, to have those kinds of feelings uh, what is in the safety of fiction. Yep. I totally agree. I get lost in books and movies. Yep, we're about out of time. Thanks so much for the call. Thank you very much for being. All right. Hey, Tony in Kansas, thanks for waiting forever. You have like 30 seconds. Okay. Um, uh, I'd just like to thank everybody. Um, this is a great show. Um, I got one question. It uh, refers to AI. I don't know how familiar you guys are with that. But my question basically is, is if we do finally get to the point of developing true uh, artificial intelligence, um, do you think that that will lend more credits and to uh, to current uh, theists about the um, about how uh, minds have to be the product of physical entities like brains or uh, hardware? Right, after thank the you. after the theists stop chasing the artificial intelligence around with pitchforks and burning them in castles <laughs> and stuff because they're soulless monstrosities, uh, and get used to them, then they will switch to the oh well that just proves that it takes an intentional effort to make an, in an intelligent being and. Uh, they'll spin it to make it war fit their worldview or slightly modify your, their worldview to accommodate it. Yeah, I agree that there'll likely be some spin, and I think that's true for AI. I think there's also going to be some spin if an extraterrestrial intelligence ever shows up on Earth. Um, but I also think that both of those scenarios would have a huge impact on many theological views and many believers. Um, who would then have to, I mean, have to embrace these facts and try to start figuring out what bits of their theology they can keep. It may, it may serve, serve to like soften some theological messages um, and cause us to redefine things in a way where some religions are going to be forced to the background. But I don't know when or if either of those things are going to happen, and we are completely out of time. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks, Jeff. We'll see you guys you, back here next week. Bye-bye. Bye, folks.